Hi, everyone. Welcome to Citizen Digital, an ITIF web series where, where I speak with experts in the United States and around the world to explore how digital technology can improve citizen and customer experience. My name is Eric Egan. I'm the Policy Fellow for Digital Government at ITIF. And with me today is Matt Schrader, Director for uh, Government Relations and Public Policy at Adobe. Matt, thanks for, for chatting with me today. Yeah, thanks, Eric. Thanks for having me. Uh, really, really appreciate you doing these series. Yeah. Um, so before before we jump into the, the broader conversation, um, maybe you can share a little bit about you know yourself, your background, um, you know how you find yourself working in this space. Yeah, thanks, Eric. So actually, I got my start working on uh, Capitol Hill. I worked for uh, Congressman Tom Davis, who was a congressman uh, from Virginia. He actually did the uh, the first kind of electronic government bill or, or the eGov Act. Uh, and also uh, FISMA, which was one of the first pieces of, of cybersecurity legislation uh, for federal agencies. So I feel fortunate that I was there and kind of watch uh, Congressman Davis shepherd through some of these landmark uh, digital government uh, pieces of legislation and uh, been doing kind of digital government and, and tech policy uh, ever since. I've been at Adobe uh, for, for nine years and you know feel really fortunate to, to work at a company like Adobe. Yeah, some of the uh, yeah, as you said, landmark kind of OG uh, digital government uh, kind of stuff there. Um, kind of back when it was called eGov, and now I, th I think we've kind of shifted away from that a little bit. But um, yeah, so maybe that, that kind of leads me to my you know, given that background, um, kind of my first question is is kind of an opener that we we do here. It says you know really how you maybe personally think about what digital service delivery is, customer experience with with government. Um, and then why, also why that's something that, you know, you're interested in from kind of Adobe's point of view. Yeah. Th thanks, Eric. It's a great, great, uh, kickoff question. Um, you know, I think we, we've long talked about the, the digital revolution. Um, it's here, right. We're not, we're not going back. Uh, I think the move to digital is certainly accelerating for every brand, uh, around the world, uh, customer expectations have never been higher when it comes to digital. Uh, I think the shift to remote work has made digital workflows even more mission critical uh, in, you know, in, in empowering those uh, modern consumers. And you know, even in this digital first world, it's, I think it's still creativity and, and personalized uh, connections uh, that we crave most uh, as people and, and as societies. Um, you know, and, and Adobe's been you know, pretty fortunate to um, you know, recently we helped out the U.S. Census uh, with with powering some of these modern digital uh, government experiences. So we had the pleasure, uh, really the honor, to power that 2020, which was kind of the first online uh, census uh, experience, um, and helped to create you know more modern, personalized uh, experiences as many people went to take that census uh, online. Um, you know, we're also doing work up in uh, Canada uh, to consolidate, uh, you know, hundreds of websites onto uh, a modern digital kind of website experience uh, platform up there. That's really cool. Yeah. I mean, I, I obviously, I think when people think of Adobe, they, they tend to think of, of forms and, and PDFs and things like that, which <laughs> which of there are many uh, in, in all, all levels of government. But um, yeah. I know when we've spoken before, there's uh, y'all do a lot more than than that, so it's kind of uh, it's always interesting to hear. Um, and and kind of I guess kind of going back to to you, know, you mentioned you've been kind of involved with a lot of this early digital government um, legislation. So um, you know, one I know uh, you were also involved with was that was 21st century idea. So this was you know um, a piece of legislation that was passed four years ago or so, and really focused on transforming digital experience in government, especially at the federal level. Um, and also had kind of an, an implementation plan to, to do so. But, um, you know, where is that at right now? Like where has implementation stalled? Is it, you know, do you, are, are people still, are agencies still working on it or what's your insight there? Yeah, I, you know, I think I think 21st century idea or, or the Integrated Digital Experience Act uh, for those viewers that uh, that don't I appreciate uh, that. know, <laughs> well, um, you know, really represented years of, of kind of a bipartisan effort to improve the public's uh, experiences uh, online. Um, you know, as, as people move to uh, more online experiences, they, they became you know, increasingly frustrated with, with access to those services uh, online, you know, particularly 
uh, in the government. Um, I give the Obama administration a lot of credit, right? They recognized this with their digital government plan uh, back in uh, 2012. Uh, and then in the last few weeks of that administration, OMB in the White House, they, they actually issued a federal agency website policy. And so the 21st century idea, I think codifies that digital government plan and, and some of those OMB uh, website policies um, uh, into law and kind of sets the bar you know, high when it comes to federal agency websites and, and forms uh, experiences. Um, you know, I think now we need to focus on uh, delivery and, and execution of those services. Um, I think agencies, when it comes to the website uh, modernization aspect of, of 21st century idea, are actually doing a pretty good job. Um, you know, if you look kind of across every, it, so if you look at probably the CX, um, the CTO or the, um, the CFO Act, sorry, the CFO Act agencies, I think they're doing yeah. a pretty good job. Um, but maybe if you go down to some of those subcomponent agencies, I think maybe there's still some work and, and they probably need to identify funding to modernize their websites. Uh, when it comes to the forms modernization aspect of that law, right? Forms is not very sexy, uh, but if you think about it, if you kind of take a step back, Forms is sometimes the first interaction that the public has uh, with um, with the government, and so we we owe it to the public, we owe it to citizens to to provide a, a better forms experience. And, and unfortunately, a lot of the the government forms are still uh, static PDFs, right? That don't render mm -hmm. on mobile devices. And so I think there's still a, I think I think the government will admit there's still a lot of work to be done when it comes to the forms modernization aspect of that law, which was pretty clear. You know, the law says that all publicly facing forms have to be fully usable on a mobile device, right? It has to be a, a mobile uh, responsive, kind of intuitive, adaptive uh, forms experience. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm, I continue to be very passionate uh, about that particular law because I think it, it has real impact as uh, the public and, and citizens uh, continue to engage more and more uh, with the government via website or, or via form. Yeah, that's, um, that's a good point. And, and as you're talking about, you know, some of the issues that smaller, maybe smaller agency ha agencies have and, and kind of web, web modernization, you know, I, I, I did a report last, late last year that was looking at that high -end service providers. Um, so these are for folks listening kind of the designated set of providers that have, um, have been designated as such by the Biden administration because they deliver kind of outsized or important services um, to, you know, to federal customers. Um, and it was interesting because obviously there's a lot of overlap with CFO Act um, agencies there um, who, who maybe have the resources to, to make this monetization. So it's part of that's kind of the issue of what we see when you're interacting with the federal government, right? So some high impact service providers are, are quite small, but they have kind of an impactful service, you know, so they're designated as such, but if you go into their website, it, it really does look like you're getting into a time machine and, and, and accessing like the internet in the late nineties, um, you know, because <laughs> they're, they're doing what they can yeah. for the most part. Um, but uh, so I'm, I'm curious, I have a, a question here at some point. Um, you know, in thinking about what you know, the, so the Biden administration also has has focused on really customer experience, and you know they've had it. They have an executive order where they've they've identified these high impact um, service providers. You know, they've it's a part of part of their the presidential management agenda. You know, is there have we seen any I guess kind of progress in thinking about now that you have those mandates, you have that momentum. People are talking about customer experience a lot in, in the federal government. Is that, does that help something like 21st idea kind of actualize, you know, is there, are, are we seeing, have you, have you seen any particular examples or any initiatives because of, because of these, these got this guidance, these mandates, um, you know, some, something that we can actually point to and be like, Hey, look, it's, you know, it, it is happening, but. Um, yeah, no, I, I think um, the, the president's executive order, I think accelerated uh, and kind of move the 21st century idea kind of back to the top of the priority list. Um, you know, it was the 21st century idea was passed four years ago. Um, 
And I've been really impressed uh, with the Biden administration's focus on customer experience, on improving digital uh, service delivery. And they actually call out um, 21st century idea in the CXEO. I think it's section seven, right? It actually has a, a specific reference um, to modernizing those, those digital service delivery, the, the websites, the forms, the the applications that uh, you know citizens and the public are hitting on on a daily basis. So you know I do give them a lot of credit uh, for highlighting that, um, and I think even uh, Claire Monterana, you know the federal CIO, has come out and said that uh, you know improving customer experience and, and modernizing digital service delivery I think is a top three priority for her. So um, that's great to see. I think there is a lot of momentum, right? We have we have OMB policy. We have uh, Congress that have put, uh, you know, codified some of these policies into statute. Now we have a, a White House executive order. Um, I, I can't think of a, another time where there's been more momentum around improving customer experience and, and digital service uh, delivery. And I think, you know, the one piece that, you know, it always comes back to funding. Um, mm -hmm. I think Congress kind of has the uh, the duty now uh, to fully fund some of these initiatives, and uh, I think it was the I think the Biden administration put five hundred million dollars dedicated in the FY twenty four budget towards these type of activities. Uh, so I hope to see you know kind of this has been a bipartisan issue. It's been bipartisan. It's been bicameral up on Capitol Hill. I, I hope that. Uh, you know, this this is kind of one of the the last remaining issues where people can actually come to, come together, right, and and work in a bipartisan fashion to to really fund uh, the the EO and the law. Yeah, that's um, that's a good point. I'm glad you're talking about funding as well because I know, you know, obviously, I um, the the TMF board, so the Technology Modernization uh, Fund, which which is also kind of a, a broad purpose kind of working capital fund within the federal government. Um, I, I know the the board reserve that's kind of chaired by um, the federal CIO, um, they, they also reserved, uh, you know, around $100 million for specifically for customer experience types, type of work. And I think within the last few months or so, they, they you know, they, I think they approved a couple projects, including for USAID, you know, is it, how, how how meaningful is that? I guess kind of thinking about what, what you just talked about with, you know, half a billion dollars um, for this upcoming fiscal year, they have the technology modernization fund. Is it, is it, is it enough? Is there, you know, is that, I mean, it's, uh, I know funding is, uh, is, is always hard to come by in, uh, yeah. in, in the federal level and agencies are, will always be like, we never have enough. Um, but like how impactful is, are, you know, these, these opportunities, um, for, for agencies, especially maybe smaller ones who don't have not the CFO act agencies who, who need anything they can kind of get. Yeah, I think, I think the president's management agenda. So that was the other, uh, aspect that I, that I left out, mm -hmm. right? So you have, you have OMB policy of the law, you have an EO, but you also have the president's mm -hmm. management agenda, which yeah. this is the number two priority is is a focus on customer experience and i think they they have it right the, i think the goal behind that uh pma uh, priority is focused on you know, how can we increase experience quality right to be on par with top consumer experiences and I, they're trying to target moving um from last place right the government's in last place into the top 10 on the Forrester CX uh, industry ranking. And so that's the right focus. And I think that they're also, the focus on the high impact service providers, the HIS is the right focus as well. Uh, and then those life experiences too. If we start to see uh, citizens in the public reacting to the modernization of those life experiences uh, and you start to see that in things like the Forrester CX uh, index. I think we're going to then know if if we've moved the, the needle uh, on on these issues. Uh, you know, one other aspect that I think we forget about is the Department of Defense, right? Service families uh, need better experiences, uh, you know, as they engage, as they kind of go on base to 
to receive uh, services. Um, that's a, that's another thing I've been focused on is is making sure um, that the Department of Defense takes this serious, right? And uh, you know we don't forget about our military uh, service members, kind of our active duty service members, and the experiences that they're getting uh, on DoD public websites and and via forms and and applications. You know, I will say the the VA is another agency I think that has really taken this serious. Um, they've done a great job of you know modernizing the front end of VA.gov. I know there's been a lot of work that's uh, gone into that service and and USDA too, right? They were one of the um, they were one of the kind of priority agencies, even under the Trump administration, now into the Biden administration, that's really focused on improving customer experience. Yeah, that's that's a good point. And um, I was going to ask you to expand a little bit, kind of explain what life experiences were. And, I, and you started to do that because I believe one of them is, is that experience, that transition from active duty to civilian life. And, you know, it's um, maybe you can hit on a little bit of why something like life experiences is, is a right approach when you think about digital experiences, because as you'll, you'll, as we'll say, that experience requires not just like going to the VA often it includes interacting with multiple services. So like what, what are life experiences and why is that kind of a, an interesting way to, to think about digital experience? Yeah. I mean, I like to think, you know, that one of the top examples it would be, you know, like a, a natural disaster. Um, hmm. I know that, uh, you know, there's been some, some challenges, uh, over at FEMA with respect to you know, accessing applications online and via uh, mobile devices. Um, you know, so that would be, you know, it, it would be great to see all the you know, FEMA forms uh, be mobile responsive. So if you just were in a natural disaster and you don't have a home and you don't have a printer, but you have your mobile device, it would be great, right? If you could, um, and I know FEMA has been, been working on this, um, if you could access all of those um, disaster recovery uh, funds and services that FEMA provides just on a mobile device, you can do everything via that, that mobile device. I, I think that's where we need to get to uh, from a, a life experience perspective. And then, you know, the other thing that we forget about sometimes is, you know, we, we do need to make sure that, um, you know, the call centers are up and running well as well, right? This isn't all about technology, right? And, and, you know, there still are folks that want to submit paper, right? So we need to make sure that that service is also available. Yeah, that's a, um, that's a good point. Um, you know, as we, obviously this, uh, the, this web series is talking about digital experiences and government all the time, but it's not, it's not the only, uh, it's not the only experience. So it may be, the uh, increasingly, uh, you know, more vital uh, experience. But one thing I like that you, you, um, you hit on was kind of that, that concept of meeting people where they are and where they are, and that's kind of, you know, it's kind of what life life experiences are thinking through, right? It's your yeah. in a in a situ what are the situations, the critical situations in which people need to interact with government, and and how can we do that? And and to your point, it's some of that is some of that is investing in, in digital experiences so they have that access because they may have a, they may have a phone right but they may not have other things no. um but but sometimes that's also thinking creatively of where a, a, an office may be located or how that experience is organized um and um uh, this is kind of i was thinking back to a you know when you were, were talking about the presidential management agenda and one of the things that they're really trying to do um and you can you go to like performance.gov slash CX, you can, tr you can see how they're trying to measure this. And I think, you yeah. know, in some of the research I've done, that's, that's also kind of a challenge. One is, one is how do you measure some, it could be kind of two questions here is one is how do you measure kind of satis customer satisfaction with existing traditional delivery models? So that that could be kind of maybe like I was saying, like how you interact in a, in an office, a, a location or, you know, walking in or interacting a kind of traditional or a call center. Um, and then how do you, how do you start to measure interactions with or like what, what tools are available to measure satisfaction with websites and really get a sense of, you know, how, how, how detailed can you go with how this application or this form is just really not working for people or for whatever, for whatever reason they're accessing, they're accessing the website at different times, you know, what, what's available out there so agencies can kind of better understand how to measure customer satisfaction across the board. 
Yeah, you know, I think that's a good question. Um, I think there certainly can be more tools out there to to help measure these type of things. Um, you know, I think you guys have been doing some great work uh, looking at uh, the accessibility of websites, and I know that GSA has some some good tools, right? That uh, you can that agencies can leverage to see how they're doing with respect to accessibility of, of websites and accessibility of forms. So, you know, I, I would point out some of the work that GSA is doing. Um, and, you know, I think it's great to see that Congress is um, taking a look at this, right? There was a hearing last year that Senator Peters and Senator Portman did on the Senate uh, Homeland Security and Government Affairs Committee specifically focused on how is the government doing with respect to improving customer experience? And they touched on uh you know implementing the 21st century idea and, and digitizing a lot of these paper-based services so i think it's great that that congress uh has taken notice right and, and is starting to uh, you know do some do some oversight hearings of this and and also backing that up too with with funding as you've seen mm -hmm. you know under covid right there was a billion dollars put into the technology modernization fund and you know, big focus of that funding is on customer experience. Um, that's a big shift. Uh, and you know, I think one of the other things that uh, people lose sight of is a lot of this funding for CX and, and for IT modernization. I think seventy percent of it is in O and M or operations and maintenance budgets. We need to somehow shift that. Uh, to more uh, what's called development modernization enhancements or DME uh, funding streams, because that's the type of funding I think that's going to help to implement everything we've been talking about uh, here yeah. here today. Yeah, that's a that's a great point, um, and and something people don't maybe don't realize as much unless you're kind of deep into the federal government is how much. You know, they say that you can point to all billions of dollars in federal IT, but but so much of that goes to the problem of you know behind the scenes the legacy systems that you have to you still have to keep running and, and you know they're expensive but they're also expensive to replace and all of that is just not even customer facing so it's it's just you know when people kind of ring the bell of like well we need this is you know we need this kind of funding to shift away from so we can get more towards that customer facing you know development like we're improving things we're investing in kind of customer facing technology as opposed to just this all this stuff behind the scenes, but um, as, as as I you know we're already we're already running low on time, so a couple more questions here. But um, one was just kind of I guess from a practical point of view, you know, we talked about funding, we talked about like you know what little little things that um, are low hanging fruit, or maybe maybe bigger, bigger things too that agencies can do if they were thinking about like how they can really move the needle as quickly as they can, as you can do it as, as any that can be done in federal government. You know, what, what kind of things should they be an agency, a federal agency be prioritizing right now? Yeah, it's a great question. I think one of the things that we've been looking at is um, the 21st century idea mandated that the CIOs be responsible for implementing that law. And while that's fine, I also think you've seen a lot of these chief customer experience officers start to, to pop up in, in federal government agencies. As you look at, as I look at the private sector and all the work that Adobe is doing to help power Fortune 500 websites and kind of e-commerce experiences, a lot of them have a, either a chief marketing officer that's focused on this, or they've actually created a, a chief experience officer or a chief digital experience officer. And, and that's something that I think uh, I'd love to see more momentum around whether it's agencies just creating uh, these these what we call CXOs on their own, or whether it's OMB uh, getting involved to, to encourage this, or even Congress, um, you know, kind of giving the statutory authority uh, to create these federal agency CXOs. Uh, you know, my mind is you know made up that CIOs have a lot on their plate, right? They have they have to do data center consolidation. They have to do cybersecurity, they have to do uh, CX, they have to modernize these legacy IT systems. I think they need a, a partner, a, a CXO partner uh, to kind of work in parallel 
and partner with to uh, to really drive forward full implementation of the CXEO of the, the 21st century uh, idea. So that, that's something we're certainly uh, encouraging. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I totally agree. And we've had the pleasure to speak to some some CXOs and it's um it's it's a it's a it's a cool role like and it's as you said it's it, it, it's good you have all this momentum political motive, momentum behind customer experience now so it would be, now would be the time to be able to create those types of, of positions right it's um, yeah. bipartisan support you have you know um, but uh i'll see if i can squeeze in one more question um and that's just yeah. kind of what you're excited about in terms of so if you're thinking about things that are out there and, and digital digital experiences at government service, you know, that, it could be the classic kind of chatbot. It could be, maybe you think chat GBT can play a role in that, but yeah. um, you know, what, what, what's out there that you think is like, you know, or it could just be like, you know what, websites are still where it's at. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one of the, the areas that we've been doing a lot of work around uh, and I'll close with this is content authenticity or uh, digital provenance, right? Mm -hmm. So, as we push out more pictures and, and videos and, and online content, um, and with you know the uh, increase of, of deep fakes and media manipulation and, and uh, you know generative AI, how can we ensure the authenticity of all those pictures and, and videos uh, that even the federal government and, and private sector companies are are posting online, and how can we um, how can we provide more authenticity and, and provenance of those pictures and of those photos so that ultimately the public can have that information and they can make the determination on uh, whether something's real or not. If a picture is real on a website or, or up on Facebook or if a video uh, is real or not. Um, and I think there's you're going to see a lot more momentum around around content authenticity and, and digital provenance. So I'll kind of close with that. And, and I think, um, you know, with Gen AI and kind of responsible use of generative AI technologies, I think folks are gonna uh, wanna see that content authenticity and, and digital provenance uh, information uh, in the future. Um, because, you know, I think, I think we can all agree that uh, governments and big companies shouldn't be the sole arbiters of truth, but uh, as we put more information in the public's hands, uh, they can decide, you know, what's true online uh, or not. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for that. No, that's a. Uh, I think you're totally right. That's a. Um, that's an interesting insight and, and, and something to to look out for. All right. Well, that is all the time we have for um, Matt. Thanks again for for joining. I, I, I appreciate it. It's a good conversation. Yeah, thanks, Eric. Thanks for having me. Yeah. And for those watching, um, don't forget to subscribe to, to ITIF on YouTube for other great content in, in tech policy. Uh, and stay tuned for more episodes of Citizen Digital. Bye now.